Hi everyone, I am Alexis Sibote, a licensed professional teacher and top 4 of the March 2023 exam, and I will be your lecturer for today. For this session, we will be rationalizing professional education questions from various topics. But before that, let's have a quick check-in po muna. Kumusta po kayo? I hope nasa mabuting kalagayan ng bawat isa. Can you send thumbs up or finger heart to action if okay ang lahat? Or you can send any emoji that will represent your mood at the moment. Ayan, I can see a lot of hearts and thumbs up reaction. Teka, bakit may crying emoji dito? Worried or pressured na ba ang lahat na magkalisensya? Nako, wag po kayong mag-alala. With your strong determination and faith in God, for sure, kakayanin niyo po yan. Anyway, as we go through our session for today, please have a pen and paper with you so that you can take note of the important details of our discussion. And now I believe everyone is all set. Let's start our session with question number one. Teacher Faye believes that there is no universal or inborn human nature. She believes that humans are born and exist, then they freely determine their essence. What philosophy of education does Teacher Faye adhere to? Mahalaga po sa pagsagot ng Prof. Ed Questions na maunawaan po natin ang tanong, kaya we need to highlight key terms. Sa case na ito, ang terms po na hinahanap natin ay no universal or inborn human nature, freely determine their essence. Ayon kay Teacher Faye, wala pong general characteristics or standards ang sangkatauhan at malaya dapat po tayong magtalaga ng ating purpose or halaga. So, let's have elimination. When we say behaviorism, if naaalala po ninyo, it talks about stimulus response or modifying the environment to come up with the desired behaviors. Kaya nga meron po tayong punishment at rewards. So, hindi po behaviorism ang ating hinahanap na sagot. Essentialism naman po, back to basics or teaching the three R's. Ito po yung reading, writing, at arithmetic. Dito lamang dapat po nakafocus ang pagtuturo. So hindi po ito ang ating sagot na hinahanap. Perennialism naman po, change does not exist or forever is real. Sana all. Sa perennialism po, it talks about the unchanging truths, yung mga pag-aaral na kahit sa paglipas ng panahon ay patuloy po na maka naging makatotohanan o relevant, katulad ng Bible or Quran. So perennialism, hindi po ito ang sagot. Dahil ang sagot na ating hinahanap ay existentialism or reality is subjective, free and unique individuals and existence precedes essence. Naniniwala po ang existentialism na Ang tao o isang bagay ay nag-i-exist or nabubuhay at malaya itong nagtatakda ng kanyang sariling purpose o halaga. At dapat unique po tayo, wala po tayong kapareho. So again, no universal or inborn human nature, freely determine their essence, existential, lesem. Number two, in the context of outcome-based teaching learning, which are the basis of evaluation? Ano daw po ang basihan sa pagkatuto sa outcome-based teaching learning? When we say learning resources, ito po yung instructional materials na ginagamit ng guro. So hindi po ito ang sagot. Instructional strategies naman, ito po yung pamamaraan ng guro. Pwede siyang mapakanta, mapasaya, mapa-roleplay. Mahalaga po ito pero hindi po ito ang basis of evaluation. Learning content naman, of course, ito yung subject matter at lesson. Ang hating pong hinahanap na sagot ay ang learning outcomes. Dahil ang learning outcomes ay ang observable and measurable terms that what a student is able to do, ma May relationship po ito sa learning objectives. Dahil po, ang learning outcomes, ito po yung mga paperworks or ang mga activities or performance tasks na naisagawa ng mga mag-aaral na naging basihan ng kaniyang pagkatuto. Again, basis of evaluation, learning outcomes. Number three, to address diversity of learners, what competency must the teacher display? Paano daw po natin matutugunan ang iba't ibang uri ng mag-aaral sa ating klase? When we say problem-based instruction at project-based activities, ito po ay instructional strategy at hindi po competency. So for example, may problem ang teacher na ibibigay at doon na po nakasentro, ito po ang lundayan ng kanyang diskusyon. Same din po sa project-based activities, may activity at doon na iikot ang diskusyon ng klase. So hindi po ito necessary na tutugon sa diversity of learners. When we say inter interactive teaching methods naman, ito po yung mga strategy na maging interaktibo or engaging ang buong daloy ng klase para maging participative o mag-engage ang mga mag-aaral sa iyong activities. Mahalaga po ito, pero hindi po ito necessary na tutugon sa iba't ibang uri o klase ng mga mag-aaral dahil ang ating hinahanap na sagot ay differentiated teaching. Ibig sabihin, tailoring instruction to meet the individual needs interests and abilities of the students. Dito na po papasok yung theory ni Howard Gardner na 
multiple intelligences. Ibig pong sabihin, may strengths and weaknesses sa mga mag-aral at kailangan po nating i-vary ang ating activity sa ating klase para po matugunan po ang iba't ibang interest at pangangailangan nila. Again, to address diversity of learners, differentiated teaching. Number four, from an overview of education, who is at the center of the educational system? Again, center of the educational system. Huwag na nating pahirapan ang ating sarili. Ang sagot po dat- natin dito ay the Filipino child. Bakit po may mga guro? Bakit po may mga paaralan? Bakit may edukasyon? Para sa mga mag-aaral. In the context of the Philippines, the Filipino child. Number five, last question. Which term from Vygotsky refers to a range of tasks that are too difficult for the child to master alone but can be learned with the guidance of adults or more skilled children? Ang hinahanap po natin dito ay range of tasks na hindi daw kayang gawin ng mga mag-aaral pero pag may tulong na ay kaya na nang gawin. Of course, symbolic function stage, hindi po ito ang sagot dahil hindi po ito kay Vygotsky, ito po ito kay Jay. Ang ibig pong sabihin ng symbolic function stage, mentally represent an object that is not present. So for example, may water bottle ang bata, iisipin niya na microphone niya yon. So walang microphone pero naiisip niya na may microphone. Lifespan development naman po, ito po ay kay Paul Baltes. Ibig pong sabihin, development is a lifelong process from Birth to death, in between that, patuloy po tayong natututo at nagde-develop. Hindi po ibig sabihin na matanda na hindi na pwedeng matuto o mag-develop. So, hindi po ito ang tamang sagot. When we say scaffolding naman, ito ba kaya ang sagot na ating hinahanap? Scaffolding po ay hindi ang sagot dahil ang scaffolding po ay ang appropriate assistance. Sa so, context po ng question, ito po yung guidance of adults or ang help ng adults. Ang hinahanap po natin ay range of task na hindi nagagawa ng mga mag-aaral pero magagawa niya kung may tulong ng adults or ng skilled children. At ang hinahanap natin na sagot ay prone or zone of proximal development. Again, zone of proximal development, range of task. Pero guidance of adults or appropriate assistance, scaffolding. And that includes po our session for today. I hope you have learned something from our discussion. At kung may questions or clarifications po kayo, feel free to message me sa ating group chat at sisikapin ko po na matugunan ang bawat isa. Muli ito po ang yung lecturer teacher Alexis Siboten na nagsasabing, ang taong masipag at metiga sa Diyos ay may pagpapala. Hanggang sa muli, future LPTs.